birthday. And then been married shortly thereafter. Well, I met my wife Linda when she was 17. I asked her to dance at West Point. So I don't have Congressman Paul Beat, but we're trying to work out a long marriage like you as well, Congressman. Listen, the star of the show is here. Yes! You yes! yes! President Paul! President Paul! In the United States of America! Yes! We need somebody who's going to stand up for the Federal Reserve yes! and say, stop devaluing our currency, Ben Bernanke! Yes! yes! Stop doing the tarp bailouts! Sending trillions of dollars to central banks over in Europe. Yeah! And start taking care of the American people. Yeah! We need somebody who's going to stand up for our military and make sure before we send our troops to war, you follow the Constitution and you get a declaration of war. Yes! Yeah! That's going to ask, is it in the national security interest? of the United States before he sends our troops halfway around the world. Yeah. He's going to stop these police actions that are bankrupting our great country. Paul. Paul. President Paul. Are you ready to elect the next President of the United States? Summer soldiers or sunshine patriots here. Looks like there are a lot of true believers in the revolution, and that's what counts. Thank you, thank you very much for coming and for that very nice welcome. And obviously, you have to be a true believer to come out and uh, spend a little time in a little damp weather, but wonderful. This is a, a real opportunity to uh, restate our convictions and our beliefs because we are in a serious mess. Is we are going to do something about it. We're in the middle of a campaign that is going to prove a whole lot that our campaign not only is alive and well, but this country is going to be changed. about uh, us getting too aggressive in the South China Sea, and they were warning us. Now, is that rather ironic? Uh, we borrow money for China, we run our military operation, we go over there and pester them uh, with our military. What, what is this? How many countries are we in now? We're in about 140, 50 countries, 900 bases. We just recently opened up a base in Australia. I don't know why we have a lot of people in Australia. That we are, we are doing this. As far as I'm concerned, putting, uh, putting troops and, and vessels and pestering the Chinese right now would be similar to allowing the Chinese to come into the Gulf of Mexico or the Chesapeake Bay and declare that it's their territory. So it's about time we change our foreign policy because it is such an important issue. We contribute to, we contribute to the war and the killing and the finances. So it is now time to bring the troops home. Yes! Our foreign policy is a schizophrenic foreign policy. It's on again, off again. We support one dictator one month and then we get rid of him. But this has been going on and on. It's just not one once or twice. At one time, we were on the same side as Bin Laden, and things happened to change. One time, we supported and we were on the side of Saddam Hussein when we wanted him to invade uh, Iran. So we, uh, we, at one time, we were close allies of Noriega. We uh, now are still allies with a country called Saudi Arabia. Fifteen out of the 19 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia, and they practice Sharia law. 
I would say that we ought to look more carefully what the founders told us and taught us and, 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 and encouraged us to follow. Is a non-interventionist foreign policy, free trade and friendship with other countries, and no entangling alliances, and no nation building. trillion dollars the first year and balance it. Yes! But of course to do that we have to change our attitude about what the role of government should be. And the role of government according to the Constitution is not to police the world and it's not to have a welfare state. It's designed to have the national government have very limited powers to protect liberty and provide for strong national defense. And that's it. facing a major crisis like we have never faced before. There's a, there's a debt crisis, there's an attack on our civil liberties, and there's an attack on our credibility around the world. What might it likely happen, and what eventually probably will happen, is when we come down financially, and we have been seen as a bully around the world, there's going to be a lot of piling on. That is why it's crucial that we change the direction of the country, change the attitude about what we, how we operate around the world, and under those circumstances, we would be seen quite differently. But if we have the bankruptcy, which is impending, we have major problems. That is why the revolution in this campaign is so crucial to change the direction of the country and look to our traditions of where we are, defend the free market property rights and a non-interventionist foreign policy. You know, in, uh, in in, the, our, in our, our early history, of course, we had a, uh, a major undertaking overthrowing an empire. And in some ways, that is what we're doing now. I believe we have an empire and we have a constant increase in the tyrannical actions of Washington, D.C. It was somewhat similar before when the British were the tyrants and they had the empire and, uh, and, and we wanted our independence. Today, though, it's a bit different because we we don't want separation. What we want is to get rid of the people who believe it's their role and they're responsible to run our lives, to police the world, to run the monetary system. Oh! So this is what we have to change and this is what this revolution is all about. You know, Thomas Paine back in those times, he wrote his first pamphlet two days before Christmas of 1776. And, and that is where the famous lines come from about, uh, these are times that tries men's souls, and uh, this is the time we have to band together. Those words were so inspiring that Washington read that to his troops on Christmas Eve, the time he crossed the Delaware River and going into Trenton was so much of an inspiration that there was a surprise victory at Trenton, which led to the I victory, running down my back. Our victory yeah. in the Revolutionary War. Every bit is great. Sometimes I think it is much greater 
because of the financial conditions of the world, the debt bubble that exists. We've had problems in the past, but we have never been so broke. We have never been in a situation where so many of our civil liberties have been taken from us, and we have never had our occupied group from so far around the world. So it is crucial that this changes as quickly as possible. But the good news is that there's a lot happening today. There's good news in this campaign, and there is certainly good news about what's happening with the revolution that is going on. I sense that the revolution for the return to liberty, and matter of fact, the improvement and the building on the liberty that we had, actually started several dec decades ago. It was a preliminary leading into what has happened in the last four years, and that was the intellectual movement that has occurred uh, throughout the country. And the seeds have been planted, and the fruits of that intellectual revolution, the definition of sound monetary policy, Austrian economics and sound money, and getting rid of that, 